We'll clap those hands, everybody. Come on, give God praise tonight. Come on, let's bless the name of the Lord for another opportunity to come together and break the bread of life. It is a blessing to be here with you on tonight. This is the day the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in this day. I want to welcome you here tonight. We are presently uh, assembled at the McEwen Church 7325 Jones Connell Road, St. Francisville, Louisiana. Amen. And I'm so glad to be here with you on tonight. Also want to welcome those by way of Facebook Live and Prayer Line Live. God bless you. Thank you so much for being here tonight. There is a word from the Lord <clears throat> in this hour of power Bible teaching on tonight. Amen. And I want to thank God for each and every person that is here. You still have time to invite somebody, send a quick text message, uh, tweet, whatever, Facebook, post, what have you, Instagram, what have you, uh, whatever the case may be. Uh, praise God. We, are, we want you to let everybody know that this is the hour of power live broadcast worship service on tonight. Praise the name of the Lord. This day has been power packed with praise, brothers and sisters. Um, our 12 noon a teaching fellowship prayer service, simply the word, prime ministry family from 12 until one every Wednesday, Facebook live, prayer line live. And we thank God uh, some of you were there with us, I'm sure. And here we are back again in the house of prayer. Amen. Tell the Lord, thank you for bringing you back to the house. He didn't have to do it, but he did it anyway. Amen. How many realize that if it had not been, hmm, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, tell me where would I be? Where would I be if it had not been for the Lord on my side? Tell me where would I be? I want to know where would I be? Mm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. He kept my enemies away. Yes, he did. He let the sun shine through on a cloudy day. He rocked me in the cradle of his arms. Cause he knew had been battered by storm. Tell me if it had not been for the Lord on my side. Tell me where would I be? Oh, where would I be? Amen. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless his holy name. Yes, bless his holy name. Praise the name of the Lord. There is a word tonight, brothers and sisters. I don't know about you, but whatever God got, I want it. Write that down. Whatever the Lord has for me, I want it. Amen. I don't want what he has for you. I only want what he has for me because what he has for me is mine. Hello, somebody. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. Amen. God bless all of you. There is a um, fantastic word tonight. I want you to turn your Bible to Luke chapter 9. The gospel of Jesus recorded by <clears throat> Dr. Luke. The gospel of Jesus the Christ recorded by Dr. Luke. Luke the physician. All right. Amen. Although Luke was a physician, Luke realized and understood that he did not have enough medicine in his medical bag. Ooh, Lord have 
person to compete with the healing power of Jesus. Mm. Luke knew it. Luke knew it, y'all. Tell, hey, tell your name, Luke knew it. Luke knew he didn't have enough medicine in his bag. Lord have mercy. Mm. To compete with the healing power of Jesus the Christ. Lord have mercy, Jesus. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Somebody needed to write that down. Write that down. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 9 tonight, brothers and sisters. And we shall look at um, really one verse. Amen. In our hearing tonight, I want to welcome everybody to uh, Sunday's, uh, not Sunday school, Bible class. <laughs> it's the same thing. Tell your neighbors the same thing. Amen. Sunday school and Bible class, same thing. We want to invite uh, Sister Sandra tonight to read uh, one verse if she's able to do that. Amen. I know she's probably working tonight or something. Sister Sandra Hayes, if you would be so kind to Luke chapter 9 and verse number 23 is where we are. Luke chapter 9, verse number uh, verse number 23. Luke 9, everybody got it? When you get that, say amen. Luke 9 and 23, one verse. Sister Sandra, come on and bless us. All right. Amen. All right, that didn't work, did it? That did not work. All right, praise the Lord. Let me just read it myself. How about that? Let me just read it myself. Amen. 23, uh, and he said to them, this is the King James Version. And he said to them, and he watched this, and he said to them all, you see the word all in there? You see that? Underline that. Underline that. And he said to them all, we overlooked that word, don't we? <laughs> he didn't say to them, but he said to them all. Underline that. Amen. This is Jesus speaking. If any man will come after me, y'all got that? Let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Y'all got that? He mentions three specific things here. He says, if any man come after me, let him, first of all, number one, deny himself. Write that down. Let him deny himself. Number two, take up his cross daily. And then thirdly, he says, follow me. Isn't that right? There's three steps now. You're gonna follow, you make up your mind to follow Christ. Those are the three steps that you must make. Three steps you must take in order to effectively uh, follow Christ. Amen. You call yourself and you want to be considered a disciple. In other words, he is listing and he is communicating the specific criteria for discipleship. There it is. Very, very specific. You know, I talk about that all the time. I say all the time, Jesus Christ, very specific. The God we serve, very specific. Very specific. No generality concerning God. Everything is very, what? Write it down, specific. Got it? Everything very specific. So Jesus Christ is communicating to them all. You, did y'all underline the word all? Okay. Who is he communicating with? <laughs> Who is he sharing this with? Everybody. He says to them, if any man will come after me. Now, first of all, you got to make up your mind whether you're going to go after him. That's number one. Amen. Make up your mind. Tell your neighbor, make up in your mind. You can't go after him on Sunday and that's it. Can't do that now. <laughs> Amen. Come on. Praise God. Put on your Sunday best. Amen. Fresh out the beauty salon, that type of thing. And Oh, amen. Got your new shoes on, all that stuff. You're looking good, smelling good, all that stuff. And then you go to church, you say, now, um, I'm, I'm, I'm going after him today. Well, well, 
uh, uh, amen. Much of what we do to go after Christ is done outside of the building. Y'all with me? We don't, we don't, amen. That, 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 that's not the major part. Amen, amen. Much of what we do to go after Christ. I want you to write this down now. We're moving fast. Much of what we do uh, in order to go after him, in order to follow him, amen, in order to, in order to seek him, much of what we do to seek him, we do outside of the building, outside of the four walls, okay? Y'all wrote those steps down, three steps. First of all, deny yourself. Take up his cross daily. Take up his cross daily. Um, amen. And then follow me. Y'all got it? All right. And so uh, I want to throw this in when we're talking about that cross now, the cross that you take up daily. Uh, amen. All of us on a daily basis must bear the cross. All right. Now we don't have to hang on the cross. Y'all with me? Jesus have done that. He taken care of that already. We don't have to go to Calvary. Amen. Only one could have done that. And he did that. Come on. <laughs> we do not even have what it takes to go to Calvary. Lord have mercy. Amen. What if God would have given you that assignment? Lord Jesus. Woo. What if me ask myself? What, what if he would have given me that assignment? I don't know. I'm just going to be honest with you. Would I have been willing? I don't know. See, y'all like the sugarcoat stuff and try to act all holy and I'm just keeping it real. I don't know. I would have to be in that position. Come on, somebody. Hey, you know how some folks, yes, indeed, I would do it. <laughs> hey, I would do whatever the Lord said. You don't know it till you're in that situation. Amen. Praise. You would want to, I mean, I can speak for myself and say, I would pray and hope so that I would be willing to do that for the Lord. Amen. And to, um, and not only for the Lord, but for, but for the, all of mankind, what Jesus did, he did it for all of mankind in all generations, past, present, and future. Did y'all know that? Amen. Little babies that's born these days. Um, Jesus died for that baby. Yeah. Jesus died for that little precious lamb that's coming into the world, to this mean world. The baby don't even know that Jesus died. And it get a little older, you know, coming to the food. And that's why it's our, 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 our uh, responsibility. That's the word I'm looking for. It's our responsibility to teach these children as they get older and they up in age, you know, to take them to church and to teach them, amen, uh, about what Christ did for them. Are you with me? And then they... Uh, the, the hope and prayer is then, then they would turn around and accept Christ as Lord and Savior, all right? When they realize what Jesus did for them. So I want to, we're moving on to our lesson now. Uh, we're in the lesson. Don't get, we're in the lesson already, but, but we got some, some deep stuff here for you to lay out for you here. Uh, some, some great, great meat, some manna from heaven tonight. I, I, I want to make sure you wrote those steps down. And verse 23 contains three steps that we must take. Okay, verse 23. Now, I want you to get it mixed up now. Um, I gave you three steps that are listed in 23 uh, there for a person that decides to come after Jesus. All right. But I also want to offer you three biblical examples of going after him. And uh, three. these are three biblical examples of radical commitment, radical ministry commitment. Y'all with me? Radical commitment, write that down. Radical, not just commitment now, but radical. So your commitment must be radical. Woo, write that down. Your commitment, make it per se, my, my commitment must be radical. The apostle Paul's commitment was radical. Hey, I'll prove it to you. On the road to Damascus, when conversion took place in the life of Paul, when Paul was converted, amen, and, and Paul's life was changed forever, all right? Paul did not do like some of us today. We accept Jesus, you know, and then we kind of ease into it, say we're going to take it slow, <laughs> you know, 
Some folks say, well, I accepted Christ, uh, Ray up, that's enough for now. Just leave me alone. I'm not going to stop drinking. I, 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 I've accepted him. You know, I walked down the aisle and, you know, I told you I believe he died for me. Amen. I, be, I believe all that. I believe it in my heart. He died for me, but I ain't ready to stop drinking. Come on. Y'all don't like to preach it tonight. So your commitment must be radical. Rev, I ain't ready to stop lying, telling all them lies that I tell. I ain't ready for that now. I'm going to do that in time. But <laughs> y'all missing me tonight. Amen. Yeah, you're in the right church. Don't switch the channel. Don't change the channel. <laughs> you're on the right page, Facebook. You're on the right page. Stay where you are. Stop scrolling. Stop scrolling. <laughs> you know how y'all be scrolling. Just stop scrolling where you are. Amen. You're on the right page, baby. Come on, somebody. Radical. Write it down. Commitment must be radical. No holes barred. Everything is over. I'm changing. The Bible says any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Everything now is new. Your talk ought to be new. Your walk ought to be new. Places you used to go, you don't go anymore. Come on. Radical. Come on. Come on, y'all. Amen. 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 You make up your mind, you're going to stop going to the club on Saturday night. And, um, you know, different generations call it different things, you know. Uh, back in the day, they called it juke joint, you know. And then I think they graduated from that and started calling it the bar room. Come on. <laughs> and then when I was coming up, amen, in my day, and I tipped in a few myself, by the way. Don't look at me funny because you did too. Hello, somebody. Amen. But uh, when I was coming through, uh, they called it the club. They <laughs> going to the club. Come on, somebody. I don't know what they're calling it now. Amen. But, but when you make up in your mind that you're not going back, that you're changing, you, you don't need to pass back by the next weekend and tell them bye-bye. You, you just stop going. Come on. I wish I had a witness. Amen. That's how the devil trick you. The devil say, well, you, you can just go one more time. Amen. I wish I had you. Hey, come on. You can just tell one more lie. It's not going to hurt you. She had a witness. Amen. Come on, somebody. All right. We, we, I, I believe we're ready now. I believe we're ready now. Maybe some of y'all mad, but I think we're still ready. Amen. Don't let the preacher make you mad. The word will. The word, the word is not. Watch this here. The word of God is not designed to make you angry. The word of God is designed to cut you. C-U-T, write it down. And to cut me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because the Bible said that, that the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. You know what a two-edged sword is? That bad boy is sharp on both sides. Y'all hear me? Both sides. And the word of God is sharper than that. <laughs> amen. 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 After every, every time you, I'm trying to get to all this stuff on in my notes. I'm trying to get to it. the Holy Spirit. Watch this. Every time you leave a setting of teaching and preaching, every time, whether it's Bible study, Sunday school, Sunday sermon, whatever. Amen. Zoom lesson training, teacher training, whatever. Wherever the word of God has been presented, that's what I'm putting, wherever the word of God has been presented on a platform of preaching and teaching, every time you leave that setting, you should leave bleeding. Write that down. You should leave bleeding because you've been cut all up. The word will cut you, man. Here's the interesting thing, and we're going to move on for real. Here's the interesting thing. God will cut you with the word, and then he'll turn around himself and heal your body. Y'all, y'all, let's go. He did the cutting, but he also wanted to do the healing. Y'all with me? Let's go. I think we're ready. I believe it. I believe it. Luke 9, 30, Luke 9, 23. Tonight we're talking about radical commitment.
radical. Your commitment, watch this here. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. It's not even a part of my notes. Thank you, Holy Just drop them. Your commitment should not be casual. Write that down. Some folk got casual commitment. Casual. What is casual? It means that, it, oh Lord, I got another C for you. Your commitment should not, thank you, Holy Spirit. Your commitment should not be convenient. Some folk are only committed when it's convenient. Ooh, woo. Jesus. Lord, are you going to let me get to these notes? <laughs> you just constantly just pouring into me. Your commitment should not be casual. Your commitment should not be uh, uh, convenient. Write that down. Your commitment should be radical. 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 All right. We're going to talk about three areas. I'm going to give you three biblical examples. Uh, we've already, uh, I want you to separate these two now on your, in your notes because we've all, in, in verse 23, we see three steps that a person should, must take, must, that's the word I want to use, mandatory, must take these three steps in 23. It's in your Bible. Number one, deny yourself. Number two, take up your cross daily. And number three, follow Christ. And it has to be done in that order. See, we, you can't follow him <laughs> unless and until you have denied yourself and decided to take up your cross. Y'all with me? That's why he lists in that order. Amen. You must do the first two in order to do the third one. Okay? But aside from that, or should I say along with that, I want to offer you three um biblical examples of this radical commitment that we're talking about, this radical commitment. Number one, commitment to Christ. Write that down. How, in other words, these are three biblical examples. How can we be committed down here on earth? How can we be radically committed down here? Number one, commitment to Christ. Revelation 3.16 sums it up. Revelation 3.16 sums it up. You can write that in your notes or you can turn there if you like to validate what I'm saying. Revelation 3.16 teaches us that Jesus Christ is not looking for wishy-washy Christians. He's not looking for lukewarm followers. He has already said very clearly that if you are hot, uh, amen, that you, that you must be hot or cold, amen, if you are lukewarm, he will literally screw you or spit you out of his mouth. Your commitment to Christ must be radical. Number one, in these three steps, biblical examples of radical commitment, down here on earth, we must first of all make a commitment to Christ. We must first of all make a commitment to Christ, all right? Jesus says very plainly in Luke 9, 23, as we revert back to that very quickly, he said to the crowd, he was speaking to the crowd of people, he said to them, if any of you want to be my follower, if any of you desire, in other words, to come after me, you must turn, let me put it this way. Now, this is the New Living Translation. You must turn from your selfish ways. Take up your cross daily. That word daily is important. I want, you, I want you to underline that in your Bible. That's a very key word, daily. Not just on Sundays, not just on Wednesdays. Come on. Take up your cross daily. Amen. And then follow him. Maji. Mm. That's Clay Evans Day, y'all. Just dance. They crawl. Mm. Alone. 
desire to come after me. He says, New Living Translation. I want you to get this. It's not the King James. I already gave you King James. This is the New Living Translation. He said, you must turn from your selfish ways. Got it? There it is. King James said, you must deny yourself. Same thing. New Living Translation said, you must turn from your selfish ways. Other words, you must deny your own self-will, your willpower. Amen. Do you know we all of us have something called self-will? What, what is self-will? Self-will is doing what we want. All of us want to do stuff. All of us want to go places, do things, uh, you know, what we want to do. Aside from what the Lord, what we, our flesh wants to accomplish, our flesh wants to do. We have self-will. We have self-strength. We have self-ability. Amen. And so Jesus says, um, King James said, let him deny himself. New Living Translation says, uh, you must turn from your selfish ways. Amen. Amen. Let me show, see a show of hand. Let me see a show of hand. Like I'm saying it, like I can see you. I can't see who on Facebook or or prayer line, but 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 amen. Let me see a show of hands. If I was in the church, physically in the church, and I probably would do this. <laughs> My church knows. I would say, I would say, let me see a let me see a show of hands of, of those that know at least one person who, who you consider to be selfish. Let me see your hand. Raise that hand. And probably right about now, uh, most of the hands would go up, if not all of them. And then knowing me, I would come back on the tail end of that. And I would ask the question, is that person that you're referring to yourself? <laughs> Amen. Come on. Because some Christians are selfish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It's all about them, isn't it? Come on. It's all about them. Me, myself, and I. Selfish. Okay. What can I get out of the deal? Come on. Amen. So Jesus says, let him deny himself. In other words, he must, he or she, okay, it's not gender specific. He or she must turn from, what does that mean? Say turn away from, that means what? Go in the opposite direction, away from your selfish ways. Basically, stop being selfish. That's it. Okay, that's it. Can we make it plain? Come on. Amen. That means you no longer follow your own wishes. You no longer follow your own will. But you're now following Christ and his will. Following Christ and his word. Following Christ and his way. Are you with me tonight? This is radical commitment. And all of us have been called by God unto this type of commitment. Everybody. Man, woman, boy, girl, black, white, Chinese, Japanese, Vietnamese, everybody, Hispanic, everybody. God's desire is for all of us to radically commit to him. Radically. Amen. You don't just go to church when it's convenient for you. No. Yeah, sometimes sometime going to church and I'm just using it for an example. Because if you're going to be committed to Christ, you're going to go to church. That's, that's it. Ain't no, ain't no if, and, but, maybe. Uh, we through with that, all right? <laughs> you ain't staying home, man. You ain't staying home. You, only time you stay home is you sick or dead or got to go to work. That's it. That's it. Other than that, you're going to church. 
and no excuse is going to be good enough. If you if you ain't sick or got to go to work or dead, you going to church. Hello. That's if you radically committed to Christ. Amen. Come on. I got to teach it right now. I know we don't like to hear this kind of talk. Amen. You know, that's why I don't feel like it. Would you? <laughs> Come on, somebody. Amen. I don't feel like it today. Amen. I wish I had a church. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. 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 And I heard so many testimonies, y'all. And me, myself, I, I'm a living testimony of this, and I've heard so many other testimonies over the years. And I'm, I, too, am a living, living testimony <clears throat> because me, myself, I'm the pastor, but now sometimes I don't physically feel like going to church. I don't. I, I might have a headache. I might just be tired or whatever, you know, physically I'm saying. You know, my spirit is willing, but my flesh is weak. Come on, somebody. But but I'm a living witness, y'all. If you press your way to the house of God, Lord have mercy, as you all have done tonight, if you're hearing my voice live tonight, amen, as you have done tonight, if you press your way to the house of the Lord, I guarantee you'll feel better. Man, you forget about that headache. You forget about that aching knee. Come on. That sore shoulder. You forget that your arm was hurting. <laughs> Come on, somebody. I wish I had a witness. Amen. Amen. The enemy want you to stay where you are. The enemy does not want you and I to radically commit to Jesus Christ. That's step number one. That's 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 um. That's our first biblical example of uh, this, this radical commitment that we're talking about. Radical commitment. Say that with me. Say one, two, three. Radical commitment. One more time. One, two, three. Radical commitment. All right? Number two. We only have three of these. First, The first one was what? Commitment to Christ. Secondly, making a commitment at church, making a commitment, making a commitment, amen, making a commitment. I say all the time, you know, we have, a, uh, most of you know, we have prayer ministry, simply the word, and, um, you know, I, I, I've said for 10 years, I've said for 10 plus years, I've said to them, um, if you have a local church, stay there, amen. We don't want to take anything away from your local church. You can still be a part of our prayer family and remain in your local church. Amen. Because I know how important it is for everybody to be radically committed at church. You got to be committed, man. You really do. You, you, you got you to gotta, you gotta commit. You got to be committed to the point that you're not trying to prove anything to anybody. But you, you just listen. I want to go to the house of the Lord. I want to get a word from God. I want to be in the fellowship of the saints. I want to be with my brothers and sisters in Christ. I want to lift up the name of Jesus. I want to do it so bad, I ain't going to miss. I'm going. Radical commitment at church. Amen. We talk about radical commitment at church now. Uh, this also, um, uh, also inclusive of the fact that, uh, you know, Yes, you're going to go to church, you're going to go to Bible study, you're going to go to Sunday school, but also away from the building, watch this here, you're going to spend time with God. You're going to study the word. You're going to pray. All of this is, all of this is, you know, uh, packed in here, all right? But the reality is, brothers and sisters, the reality is, it's a very, very sad reality, many Christians have adopted a cafeteria style approach toward church. Somebody said, what is a cafeteria style approach? Write that down. Cafeteria style approach toward church. That means they pick what they like and they leave everything else alone. Mm-hmm. Yep. 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 Write it down. They choose, they pick and choose. They got picks and choose what they like. They leave everything else alone. Amen, somebody. You know how it is. Amen. Y'all know, y'all know, y'all heard of Piccadilly, right? Libby's, right? 
He said, all these are cafeterias. They serve cafeteria style food. And you walk down the aisle, you go to Piccadilly, y'all heard if you're in the south, southern part, especially in the southern part of the United States, you know, you know about Piccadilly. <clears throat> um, when you walk in Piccadilly, and I love Piccadilly, by the way. <laughs> Amen. Um, we ain't gonna start talking about that uh, Italian cream cake. We ain't gonna start talking about that. And we ain't, we're not gonna start talking about that red velvet cake either. We're gonna leave that alone. We ain't gonna talk about that. Amen. <laughs> but but uh, but but when you when you go into Piccadilly, you walk down that. You gotta walk down the line, right? And you don't choose everything. You only choose what you like. Y'all missing me. Y'all missing me. You see fried chicken, you see steak, steak patty, you see all oh, making somebody hungry, I know. Uh, <laughs> but uh, namely myself, because I have not eaten supper, so I'm getting hungry just talking about it. But, um, you know, you see all of these choices. You see fried fish, baked fish, right? And you don't, you don't choose all of it. You just, want, you just tell the lady or the man, could be a man, what you want. That's the problem in the church. We ought not have a cafeteria style approach at the church or concerning the church. Tell your neighbor all of it's good. I wish I had it with you. Tell your neighbor all of it's good. Tell, tell your neighbor, get a little bit of everything when you're at the church. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. You know what I'm talking about. Amen. You, you, Choir member, you sung your solo. Yeah, I'm talking. Yeah, I'm saying. Choir member, you sung your solo. Now you're going in the back of the church. You, you do now. You did your. No, stay in there and support Sally. Sally got the next song to lead. The next song is Sally's song. Don't leave out. Come on. I wish I had it. Oh, I'm going to teach it right. Oh, I'm going to do that. I'm not you look on anything, amen. And we can see this lacking in every area of the church from the pulpit and on around. I'm gonna say the pulpit as well, yes. That's right, I'm gonna say that. I'm not trying to beat up on it. I'm just saying what I'm saying. I'm just saying what I'm saying, amen. Amen, I'm the kind of preacher that um, uh, you know, it's it's just customary. It's not biblical. Uh, as, if y'all y'all probably have noticed uh, that uh, when uh, what other preachers do to support preachers, who the the one preacher who's preaching, you know, you go to a service, a worship service, and the only one preacher gonna preach, right? Whether it's me or Johnny or Larry or somebody, you know, only one is gonna preach the sermon that day. Amen. Uh, but it's just customary uh, that. That, that while he's preaching, all of the other preachers are, are amen in him. And, you know, we're standing to our feet and, you know, we might hit him on the back, you know, that, and when y'all see us hit him on the back, that, that, that mean, man, that, we, we, that's our way of telling him, man, preach, doc, doc, preach, the, doc, doc, you own it, say it, man. That's our way of supporting him. Are y'all with me? Amen. I'm not listening. I'm not, I'm not going to leave. Listen, I've been there for, the, I've listened to the choir. I've listened, I've sang all them songs. Amen. And, and most of them too long. But, uh, and we're going to say that about that. But, um, <laughs> and, uh, and, and, uh, and the deacons have prayed and all of that stuff. And, you know, and, and, um, and, and, and your little grandbaby recited her poem. And, you know, and we all supported all of that. Amen. Now it's time for the preached word, and I'm not leaving. Come on, somebody. I know some people do. They're ready to walk out now, because you know, they, but I'm staying. I'm going to support the man of God. Hello, somebody. We're just talking about this cafeteria style approach that some of us have concerning the church. We, we choose, we pick and choose what we want, what we like, but we leave the rest where it is. That's not, that's not God's way. Amen. Because membership in Christ's church, in the church of Jesus Christ, 
involves a covenant relationship with a body of believers who watch over one another, who cherish one another, who pray for one another, and who fulfill the great commission together. One person can't do it. We do it together. We see that in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We don't have time to go there. Write it down and go to it later. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 through 31. Let me repeat all that. Membership in the church of Jesus Christ demands a covenant relationship, amen, among the body of believers. And they are going to, if they do it the right way, do it God's way, they're going to watch over one another. They're going to cherish one another. They're going to pray for one another. They're going to be there for one another. They're going to rescue one another when one is in trouble, when one hurt, all hurt. Come on. When one rejoice, all rejoice. Hello? And they're going to fulfill the great commission together. All right? The Bible said the strong must bear the infirmities of the weak. So if I'm weak, I need you to be strong. <laughs> Hello, somebody. Woo. Oh, that was... Mm -hmm. And if you're weak, you need me to be strong. Amen. Come on, it's in everybody being weak now. <laughs> somebody, somebody got to be strong. Hello. Amen. Amen. And that strength is gonna, it's gonna, amen, enable the weak one. Uh, uh they're gonna you rub your shoulder with them, and 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 they're gonna get stronger now. They're weak, but they're gonna get stronger now because why? Because they are they're gonna feed off of the strength that they that they feel from you. All right, y'all got it. Number one, we talk, we're giving these offering these three biblical examples of of um that's why I'm giving you Bible to to validate what I'm saying, give me a scripture. Oh, now write that down. We didn't go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, but write that down, uh, verse 12 through 31. Write that down. Dealing with this commitment um, concerning the church uh, at the church. And then number one, commitment to Christ. First of all, commitment to Christ, because you, you can't be committed nowhere unless you first of all commit to Christ. Y'all with me? That's why it's number one. It's number one for a reason. Tell your name. It's number one. Commitment to Christ is number one for a reason. You can't be committed anywhere else unless until you're first committed to Jesus Christ. Revelation 3.16 is what we offer there. Hope you wrote that down. Jesus is not looking for wishy-washy Christians. He's not looking for Luke, uh, lukewarm followers. You know, those lukewarm followers. Amen. The lukewarm follower is the one who says, whatever y'all want to do is all right with me. Mm. I don't want to work with you. I don't want to serve with them. Amen. So you, in other words, what you're telling me is you'll accept anything. Come on. See, the lukewarm Christian, really, it doesn't matter to them which way the wind blows. They know they're saved, the only way to heaven, that's all that matters to them. Come on. But you have to be radically committed. Commitment to Christ is number one. Commitment to church, um, to the church is number two. Y'all got it? This is our final commitment here, commitment on your job. I want to talk about this because we got some folk that... Um, we got some, everybody ain't retired now. Everybody ain't blessed to be retired like you. Uh, amen. Some folk are working and that's a blessing. Amen. Pandemic is, you know, kind of, <clears throat> things are better now in 21 than they were in 20, 2020. Everything was just about shut down. All the jobs and, you know, everything, I'm not going to say all jobs, but uh, many of them were, were being threatened by this global pandemic. And many businesses had to close down um, if, if not for good, at least for a season, at least for a few months. So we can get a, try to get a handle on this virus. It still don't have the kind of handle we need on it because folk, folk refusing to get validated. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying that. 
Amen. Folk don't want to get validated. Uh, what I say, validate, Lord, have mercy. Uh, vaccinated. I got that now. I got it right now. Folk refuse to be vaccinated and um, and stuff like that. Refuse to wear that mask and all that. And with that Delta variant out there, I'm just throwing this in. Uh, but but brothers and sisters, the third and final commitment is commitment on the job. Commitment on the job. In the past, um, employers appreciated workers and workers appreciate employers and, and, and workers also valued their jobs, valued their employment. Amen. But these days, folk, man, folk will work a week and then quit. I, I, you know, I mean, good paying job. I, I'm just be, I'm just shaking my head. I'm like, Lord, have mercy. Come on, somebody. There's no commitment there. There's no commitment. You, you know, you, you show up like, uh, 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 amen. Now, now the difference is between job and church is some people are willing to show up late for church, but not their job. And that's that's good that you're showing up, that you're commit that shows a commitment on your job. But where's your commitment at the church? We need that same energy concerning the church. You know you have to be at work for eight o'clock. And if you don't, if you're not there by eight, they're gonna write you up, they're gonna reprimand, whatever they call it, whatever word they want to use. Amen. They're gonna mark it on your file. And if you're late five times, they're gonna call you in and talk to you. So they tell you all this when they hire you in human resources, right? So you know what's going to happen. So why? So what do you do? You show up on time. So we need, brothers and sisters, we need that same energy. For those of you that are committed on, I'm not saying everybody's not committed on the job, because there are some who are committed on their job. We're talking about a radical commitment now, down here on earth. And for those who are committed on that job, we need that same energy in your church. Now you're talking about my church, every church, every local church, we need that energy. We need you on time. <laughs> Come on. You know worship start at, uh, let's say 11 o'clock at your church. Worship start at 11. Come on. If you pull it, if you driving up at 11, you late. Y'all don't like me. <laughs> If you're driving up at 11, that means you're late because we get ready to start. We're starting right now. <laughs> Amen. I wish you all be late every Sunday. Come on. You know, we know things happen, you know, wrecks and things and, and uh, you behind accidents and uh, train caught you. We know things do happen. Amen. Uh, but, but there needs to be commitment. We're talking about, we just reach back to talk about the church, but, but really we're talking about uh, kind of tying it in so you can get it all commitment on the job, all right? Um, today's uh, workplace is um, oftentimes, uh, in today's workplace, it is adversarial. And what, what do I mean by that? That, that there's always seemingly tension uh, on the job, employees criticizing their bosses, criticizing their supervisors, and uh, also along with that, many employees only do uh, the minimum just to get by. Just to get by. They don't want to do anything extraordinary. And then when Johnny gets the award for productivity, you mad or you looking at Johnny funny. But well, you just, you, you've been doing just enough to get by. I wish y'all don't like me. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. And then on Employee Appreciation Day, Jan, they call Johnny's name up front. Give him a big plaque and everything, big ceremony. Put him on social media. This is our employee of the month or the year, or whatever. Greatest productivity for this quarter. Come on, somebody. Commitment. I'm helping you, but you're not going to admit it. Type it in if you're not ashamed. Say, say you're helping me, man. I appreciate it. Amen. Um, so don't just do the minimum required to get by. Same thing in the church now. We're talking about the job, but same thing in the church. Same thing concerning Jesus Christ. Don't just do it just a little bit. Amen. Right? This is not God's way. 
God demands radical commitment in every area of our lives. And this is not one that we're talking about, but I'm going to throw this in also concerning the family. The family is the first institution that God ordained. God ordained the family before he ordained the church. Did you know that? We need a radical commitment even concerning the family. That could have been number four. I don't have it in my notes, but Holy Spirit just gave them. That could have been number four. Radical commitment uh, in the family. Amen. Because God's way demands um, as, we, as we're talking about this, this, this workplace environment, this workplace commitment, God's way in the workplace is, is that he demands uh, mutual commitment between management and laborer. Same thing applies in the spirit realm. As God our Father is committed to us. God is committed to us, y'all. He said, I never, leave. oh, you don't believe me? The Bible said, look, the Lord said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Now, now if that ain't commitment, Lord Jesus. Type it in and say, that's commitment. The Lord said, he himself, Deuteronomy 30, I think Deuteronomy chapter 30 or whatever, it's around that area. The Lord said, uh, and it's in Jesus, it's, a mo it's in the New Testament as well. The Lord said, <laughs> I'll never leave you. Neither will I ever forsake you. That's commitment, man. That is commitment. That's commitment. That's radical commitment. Amen. Husbands lead wives, wives lead, leave husbands and all. And we know I'm not going to get into that, uh, deep into that, because I know that there are various reasons for that. Um, and, and especially if it's a situation where, you know, someone is in danger or something, you know, or harmed, being harmed in harm some way, uh, then, then there, there needs to be, you know, some kind of, Somebody need to some, some kind of separation there until, until we can get things going uh, back on the right track. But um, so I'm not gonna get deep there, but 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 there must be radical commitment even concerning the family. Okay. Paul says in uh, Ephesians 6, now we're not gonna turn there because we're getting ready to go to the house. Uh, Ephesians 6, Paul says, obey your earthly masters. All right. This is the, from the Message Bible. It's another translation, third translation we're offered, uh, translation we're offering unto you tonight. We're offered the King James, we're offered the New Living Translation, now we're offering the Message Bible Translation. Paul says in Ephesians 6, verse 5, 6, 7, 8, Paul said, obey your earthly masters. He says, always uh, with an eye to have an eye to obeying the real master, which is Jesus the Christ. Right. So by you obeying those on earth that have rule and authority over you down here, it shows that you also have a commitment to Jesus Christ. You can't have a if you can't listen, if you can't go to them folk job and do what they tell you to do, how you <laughs> that's the reason why you have so much trouble at your church. Because you don't want to listen to nobody at the church. Come on. Y'all missing me. I'm helping somebody tonight. Yeah, I came to help you, baby. I came to help you. Get it right. Get it right, y'all. Get it right. We need to learn how, uh, as Paul says, obey our earthly masters. There are just certain individuals that have rule and authority over us uh, in the home, uh, amen, family, amen, in the church, on the job, everywhere we go. But we keep in mind that we, the ultimate, the real master is uh, Jesus the Christ. That is the ultimate master teacher. Amen. So don't just do what you have to do to get by. But Paul says, work heartily. Write that word down. Work heartily. When you work heartily, what does that mean? That means that you've given everything you got. You're giving 100%. Somebody say 110%. <laughs> so you're going over and above. You're giving everything you, you're giving all of you. 
all of yourself into this cause. Amen. Ain't no, ain't look, what, let me tell you. It, it makes no sense to, to jump up and say you're going to join the choir ministry if, if you're not committed to going to rehearsal. I mean, why? <laughs> Y'all don't like me. Why are, you, why are you even messing with that? Why, why are you messing with them folks? Let them folks stay there and keep on doing what they're doing. Come on. I know it sounds good. Amen. You say, I'm, I'm getting in the choir. All right. Great. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. Awesome. But have a commitment with it. And it's going to be some sacrifice. Amen. We talked about it. I'm closing with this. We talked about earlier today and simply the word uh, how that a few years ago the Lord told us to pray at midnight for 30 days straight. And we did. And we, we prayed at midnight, you know, and and I, for one, had to sit my, you know, because I'm, I'm be sleeping midnight. <laughs> I go to bed early, you know. I don't, I don't stay up late, so I had to set my 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 alarm, you know, uh, for like eleven, whatever, thirty, eleven forty five, whatever it was. And I would get up, and we were calling into all of us calling. Y'all remember that? Some of y'all that's here tonight on this platform, and we were calling into the prayer line at midnight, and we would have a brief word, and we would pray one prayer. And then we would, we, would, we would sign off. Why do we do that? Number one, because the Lord said do it. Number two, because we were radically committed. There it is, y'all. I'm trying to close out here. Paul said, but work heartily, keeping in mind that no matter um, who happens to be given the orders, you are not serving them, you're serving God. Amen. Amen, somebody. And you know, and, and I'm gonna say this, <clears throat> women, you know, I love y'all. I love y'all, I love the men, I love the women, I love everybody. But I gotta say it, um, on these jobs, a lot of times I've seen it myself when I was working, on these secular jobs where women have, where women have women supervisors, Okay, they can deal with the men too much, but they can't deal with another woman. I don't know what it is with y'all. <laughs> who does she think she is? <laughs> I know she, it ain't who she thinks she is. Who, who is she? She your supervisor. That's who she is. <laughs> y'all don't like it. Let me let y'all go. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Come on. I'm not doing nothing, she tell me. Well, you're going to be out of a job. Is that, is that what you want? <laughs> Let's go to the house. We've had a good time tonight, y'all. Amen. Y'all know I love to, you know, I keep it real, but I love to have fun and enjoy worship and enjoy teaching and all of that. I believe that, that you can be impactful and still have uh, joy doing it, you know, still have fun, you know. Um, I, I believe that's that's the way the Lord wants us to do, wants us to enjoy what we do. When we go to Bible class, we ought to have a good time. Come on. We go to Sunday school, we ought to have a good time. We ought not be sitting up there. Um, somebody used the phrase, and I, I'm just going to say it. Um, uh, they say it uh, like you're sucking on lemons. I don't know what that means. <laughs> but I, hey man, I, I mean, maybe that's because you frown up. I think that's what they mean. Person that's sucking on lemons is frowned up, you know, like that. <laughs> so uh, you ought not go to church like that. No, no, you shouldn't be going to Bible class like that, Sunday school. Amen. You gotta go to smile on your face, be joy in your heart. Amen. Glad to be in the in the service. Glad to be in the service. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. 714. Let me let y'all go. Listen, we're gonna lift the offering real quick. That's our lesson for tonight. I pray you were blessed and abundantly blessed, tremendously blessed by the word of the Lord tonight, talking about radical commitment, radical commitment in ministry and, and radical commitment in life, you know, just being radically committed in every area. That's where we need to be, radically committed to it. All right. So we talked about the church. We talked about the, on the job. We talked about the family. Um, we talked about um, also being, first of all, being committed to Christ. Luke 9 and 23 is our base scripture. And we uh, listed those three steps 
Jesus gave us three steps for a person that they must take in order to come after him. First of all, you must, first of all, deny yourself. Secondly, take up your cross daily. And then thirdly, follow him. Okay, we're lifting the offering uh, by way of cash app, dollar sign McEwen BC, dollar sign McEwen BC. That McEwen is M-C-K-O-W-E-N BC. All right, dollar sign Hickory Grove, just like it's pronounced, Hickory Grove MBC. All right, and we have PO boxes for both churches. All right, always one of is Jackson, Louisiana, for the mailing addresses for both Jackson, Louisiana. McEwen is the PO box is one four eight one. 1481. Hickory Grove is 1721. Jackson, Louisiana for both. Okay, 70748. All right. Um, we want to, um, uh, this time last week, we opened the door of the church virtually and a young man gave his life to Christ and joined our church, became a part of the body of Christ as well as a member of our church. And we we're so grateful. Then on Sunday, y'all, then on Sunday, we baptized him. This past Sunday, we were back in the church for the first time in 16 months. We baptized him in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And also, uh, two young men rededicated their lives to Christ and to the church. It was an awesome time this past Sunday. So we want to open the door now. Amen. You can text me right now if you're on Facebook, 225-202-8431. 225-202-8431. If you're on the prayer line, you can text me as well. Let me know. Amen. That you want to give your life to the Lord. And um, or also, uh, if you want to be, be a member of our church, you don't have a church, you can be a member of our church. We'd love to have you. Man, woman, boy, girl, let us know. Amen. At any time. But the door is open now. Praise God. Everybody needs a church. Everybody needs a pastor. I tell people that all the time. You need that. <clears throat> Amen. If you didn't need it, uh, the Lord wouldn't tell us that we needed it. Amen. And he talks so much about it in his word, about pastors, leaders of the church. Amen on the shepherd of the church. So we're getting ready to go, brothers and sisters. We love you in the Lord. And um, we want to say that we're still praying for the Scott family uh, in the passing of uh, Brother Warren Scott, who we affectionately called Uncle Bookie, went on um, to be with the Lord on this morning. And um, and uh, a man um, already got the word that um, they're looking at next Saturday. Families looking at families looking at next Saturday, not this Saturday, but next Saturday. All right, that's the word that we have received. If, unless that changes, that's the word that I received on today. On today, Amen. So uh, let us continue to pray for the family. Let us continue to pray for those in Florida that are going through. We know what they're going through. Let us continue to lift up this nation, this world, and this country that we're living in. We're living in terrible times. Amen. I saw something on the news. The president of Haiti was assassinated. Is that right? Somebody text me. I don't want to put the wrong thing out there. The president of Haiti assassinated. Come on. Text me fast. Now I got to let you go. Come on. Amen. Waiting on a text. Yes or no? One word. All right. I saw something like that. Amen. We need to know, brothers and sisters, we're living in the last days. Somebody texting me. Uh, yes. Sister. Uh, all right, Sister Case. Thank you. Sister Case said yes. His wife is still alive. I think that's what you're trying to say there. His, his wife is still alive. Wife, oh, his wife got hit too, but she is recovering. All right, praise the Lord.
praise the Lord that the wife is still recovering, but uh, yeah, Sister Paula Reed, thank you, Sister Paula Reed, Sister Joanne Hartnett, thank you, amen, amen, y'all being, y'all being obedient, I love that, I love that, amen, amen, bless the Lord, bless God, bless God, all right, we're getting ready to go, and um, praise God, we're missing Brother Marquis tonight, he's, um, um, he's accountable, amen, he's in uh, uh, unavailable tonight. He's in school tonight in class and uh, says how much he misses us and we miss him. Praise God. Amen. So we're going to go want to say to the members of our church as a reminder, um, pressing forward in the meet in the week here as we do every week, family focus. Don't forget it. Family focus. Let everybody know family focus fellowship. Members of our church come together just for a few minutes to love on one another, all right? Love you all. Um, and we'll, we'll keep having the Family Focus Fellowship, y'all, um, until we resume midweek services in the church. And we back in on Sunday, but not for midweek. We remain virtual on Wednesdays for now. And so we'll continue to have Family Focus, um, I guess, until that time, whenever the Lord says so. All right, I believe that's it. I believe that is it. God bless all of you. Uh, amen, I'll be praying for you. You pray for me. We're gonna sit back and watch God change things. Every head bow, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this lesson. Thank you for these, your people that have come by with Facebook, by with prayer line, God. Those who are in the house, God, we thank you. Thank you for the sacrifice they made to be here. Some of them perhaps have made great sacrifice. And God, we thank you. Thank you that your word, Lord God, we pray your word did not fall on deaf ears, that your word fell on penetrating hearts and receptive hearts in Jesus' name, that your word has helped us to change. God, we thank you. We love you and we praise you in the name of Jesus. Everybody say amen. God bless y'all wave at me. Don't be like that. Come on, Facebook, wave at me. <laughs> Hallelujah. God bless you. We'll see y'all next time. God bless you.